to the Wheels of Fury Halloween special. Yeah, Christmas we did an episode for Christmas I guess and I thought we should do an episode for Halloween because obviously they do a lot of Halloween episodes for wrestling. I couldn't find too much on other promotions just WCW and WWE and one for TNA but I thought, what the hell, let's, even Memphis Wrestling didn't have too much, mm. or if any, so, yeah, this is my favorite time of year, obviously. Yeah, Halloween's one of those times of the year where you can, usually when we're younger, we imagine certain things, and like, when I get older, I want to be a doctor or an astronaut, or a scientist, or a mechanic, whatever. But Halloween, you can actually kind of dress up like one of the career you might want to have when you're older. Yeah. Or you can go all out and do something totally random. Yeah, like I remember dressing up as a Dalmatian once. I was a cowboy once, a chef, a bunch of crazy shit. That was awesome. And I mean, this was, again, another time of year where you can dress up and be whoever you want to be and eat as much sugar as you want. Like, I mean, that's kind of it. Halloween is like one year, my brother and I went home after trick-or-treating and dumped a whole bunch of chocolate and even cans of pop and whatever you can have chips it's the only time of year where kids can be kids sort of i really find that like halloween is the one time of the year where you can get all the candy you want for free essentially mm -hmm. now i myself did trick-or-treating and like I found I was the killer, the scream movies, and I can't remember what other costumes I had. It seems to be that you really hope that on Halloween, when you do go out trick or treating, you really hope it's not going to be too, too cold because you don't want to be freezing your ass off. <laughs> well, yeah, and you know, there was one year where it was raining. Yeah. It was really pissing me off because Halloween's my time of year. I love it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, things happen. Yeah. You know, some parents are pussies and their kids, you know, they go, Oh, we can't go trick or treat now. It's raining. Bullshit. Yeah, I mean, just because it's raining it doesn't necessarily mean you can't go out trick or treating. Yeah, you might only go out for like maybe a couple hours, but that's fine. When you think about wrestling, though, you think about the vignettes they used to have in the 80s. Yes. And I'm just watching one, and we're talking about Roddy Piper 
And I mean, he did holiday stuff. Oh, yeah. So it was like, you know, Christmas, he did the bell humbug thing. And, you know, Halloween, it was Vince going up to his house or mansion, whatever you want to call it. And he's giving out candy to kids. And you'll notice a young Stephanie McMahon. Mm-hmm. Of course, it ended up, you know, they gave him a the chocolate covered hot pepper. Mm-hmm. So that was interesting, but other than that, you know, you had a lot of Halloween themed episodes of Raw and SmackDown. Mm-hmm. You have the Halloween street fight, which was interesting. Mm-hmm. All, in, all inventive stuff. Yeah, like yesterday for SmackDown, they had a match with Big E against Cesaro. And, of course, around the ring, they had, like, jack-o'-lanterns and tables for, like, bobbing for apples and other stuff like that. And all three members of the New Day dressed up like the members of the Brood. Edge, Christian, and Gangrel. Oh. And, of course, you had Cesaro and Seamus in their usual decked out camouflage jackets with the kilts and whatever. One thing I noticed though was I don't know if Seamus was trying to be like a zombie or whatever but it looked like he got into a fight with a bag of flour. Ah uh, jeez. Like his face was white wow. and his beard was white and his mohawk was white. Oh he's already white anyways. Oh, yeah. But, also, when you think about Halloween and wrestling, Mm -hmm. you have to talk about Halloween Havoc. Of course. Now, I only saw one Halloween Havoc. I didn't watch all of them, but Mm -hmm. from what I saw, it was fucking stupid. Yeah. I mean, come on. I don't know if it was Halloween Havoc or Fall Brawl. But the pay-per-view didn't end. Mm. It's like Roddy Piper came out and then that was it. He came out during a match. Mm -hmm. I think there is one, and again, I don't know if it was Halloween Havoc, the uh, screen cut off or something. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's how much I glad I didn't watch WCW growing up. Well, I mean... Halloween Havoc was really cool because the way they set up the stage was like you had a graveyard and then you had a really big inflatable pumpkin with like a monster or gargoyle or whatever it was inflatable as well and it's moving and it's like Oh, that's cool. Like, just the appeal for, like, how WCW made their stage fit the overall theme of the show, I guess, you could say. Now, none of the wrestlers, like, dressed up or anything like that, but I mean, just the fact that you got your stage set up to look Halloween-esque was pretty cool. Yeah, and uh, only for TNA, I didn't see anything except for I found a bottle of oil, mm. which making this one. Right. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. See, that's the problem. I didn't find a lot of stuff that I did for when I did the Christmas, or when we did the Christmas episode. And I'm trying to look up a lot of cool shit, and I can't find it. Well, I remember one time I was watching the WWE Network, and I can't remember what I was watching exactly. It was probably like uh, 205 and NXT, and then the May Young Club, whatever it was. And they showed an old, from like 88, 89, maybe 87, somewhere in the 80s, I believe it was, or into the 90s. And there was a pie-eating contest. Oh, yeah. And it was uh, Captain Lou Albano against uh, King Kong Bundy. 
and you had several of the wrestlers dressed up as different characters. You had like King Kong Bundy dressed up as like as Abraham Lincoln, oh. and Hulk Hogan dressed up as I think it was Hercules, and Macho Man Randy Savage and Elizabeth were I think. Tarzan and Jane, and there was various other ones. The idea that these wrestlers would go the distance of dressing up in a costume of whatever kind, and then do a Halloween-based... It was like a Saturday Night Man event or whatever it was. Okay. Yeah, and especially if it's good, you know... The 80s and early 90s, at least, were geared towards children. So right. Even in the 2000s, you had a lot of that campy stuff, and which, you know, the mid 2000s wasn't really done properly, but mm. I know it was pretty cool. And I think one thing, well, one last thing I'll mention, because like I said, I, I couldn't find much on YouTube or anything was 2003 mm. the Halloween party yes and you had John Cena in his first I guess I don't know if you want to call it breakout performance or whatever very first time he got actually noticed mm. dressing up as Vanilla Ice and cutting rhymes and yeah you had Stephanie McMahon dressed up as a witch Eric Bischoff who dressed up as Vince mm -hmm. And they eventually kissed at the end, which was mm. kind of odd. Yeah, I remember watching Eric Bischoff's documentary, and he's talking about that occasion, and he goes like, Yeah, I'm wearing a Vince McMahon mask and talking like him, then I take off the mask, and, you know, I'm talking with Stephanie, and I'm putting the moves on her, and then I kiss her. Meanwhile, you know, Mr. McMahon is standing there witnessing all this and like directing the scene or whatever. It's like, in a way, that would be very awkward. You know, like having your boss watch you kiss his daughter. But I mean, at the same time. Well, having that guy dress up as you. True. Kissing your daughter. Kissing your daughter. Up. But I mean, I don't really think Vince necessarily cared. Well, he probably cared, but he didn't really think a whole lot of it, especially if like he was the one that came up with the idea for it. Yeah. But just the overall idea of like, you're pretending to be your boss for Halloween. That you. Put a kiss on your boss's daughter. Meanwhile, your boss is literally standing there, watching you do it. Yeah, that that whole year was fucked up. I hated, yeah. I did not like that year whatsoever. But well, okay, I can't really think of any more Halloween episodes. But you had a lot of like Halloween esque type characters. Like you had the bird. You had mm -hmm. Dungeons and Doom, or not Dungeons of Doom. Uh, you know, with Kevin Sullivan. Oh, yeah, it was the, that was the Dungeon of Doom. Dungeon of Doom, okay, good. Yeah, Taskmaster and the Zodiac and uh, yeah. Shark and all that other stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of like you were getting into that with characters like The Undertaker and The Ministry mm -hmm. and Kane. I mean, they did have a lot of cool episodes for Monday Night Raw and SmackDown, you know, it's just, it's almost the same, like, you know, Battle Royal or mm. a theme, like Halloween Street Fight or something, mm -hmm. something like that. So, I mean, that's kind of the way it is. But for WCW, as I've mentioned many times, I was not a fan, so I didn't really watch any episodes, but I have seen Halloween Havoc, so... One thing I really noticed is usually when an episode of like Raw or Smackdown well, falls on the night of Halloween itself, 
the entire episode is like gone all out and people are dressed up and they have these like street fight or have the divas in a Halloween costume contest and other stuff like that but just having Smackdown be last night which of course is the night before Halloween and really the only Halloween ish thing they did was this match with Biggie and Cesaro. Yeah. I'm a little disappointed because I, I tried to do my research like I did for Christmas and I just couldn't find enough. Like I don't even know how many episodes CCW dedicated to Halloween. Yeah. So, I, don't, I don't know. I don't really know too much about that. And see, it seemed to be like WCW did fairly big thing for Halloween, Halloween Havoc, WWE, depending on when exactly you have a Monday Night Raw or Friday, Thursday, Tuesday, whatever episode of SmackDown seemed to fall either on Halloween or maybe just before Halloween or whatever, they would take the liberties of kind of going all out for it. But, as far as, like, TNA, ECW, maybe Ring of Honor. Yeah, um, I didn't even think of that either. You know, it didn't really seem like other promotions put too much effort into it. But then again, with, like, during the early to middle, well, pretty much the whole year of, like, the 90s, essentially, was... WWE and WCW were your two main yeah. focuses as far as pro wrestling went. And so you're going to see a Halloween Havoc and then maybe Monday Nitro will do a Halloween themed episode or Monday Night Raw or Smackdown, you know? Yeah. Ah, uh, well, this has been an interesting, I know it's a short episode because I obviously can't fucking think, and I feel bad because this is honestly one of my favorite time of the year, and the fact that I can't, because I look, I don't know, I probably didn't look hard enough, but I mean, it's... It doesn't really seem to be that you're wrestling shows or wrestling promotions seem to put more of an effort into Christmas and Halloween, I guess? Yeah, I guess. Which is a shame, but I mean... Yeah, I much prefer Halloween, but... Yeah. Yeah, well, anyways, this has been an interesting episode. I told people on my Facebook, uh, on our face. I'm sorry, I don't mean to exclude you. Yeah! <laughs> on the Wheels of Fury on Facebook page. On the Wheels of Fury Facebook page that... We we're gonna do a Halloween episode. I don't think we're gonna do a crown jewel. I'm just gonna say crown royal. I don't think we're gonna do a crown jewel episode because we didn't do a super show episode. Right. Now, yeah, who knows? Like, really, I. I who knows? Anyways, this is. But another episode of Wheels of Fury, it's not as long as our usual episodes, mm -hmm. but that's just the way it is. But anyways, I mean Matt, this is Killer Kyle, and we will see you next time. Talk to you later. Deuces. Yeah, decent. <laughs>